It's a beautiful spring day here in Central California. When people are enjoying the great outdoors, they unfortunately can encounter and often um, get bitten by um, rattlesnakes. Their activity tends to peak this time of year, so they go out and lay in the sun and warm themselves to the body temperature that they, they need to be at. So there's a lot of activity uh, during this time of year with our rattlesnake species that are here in, uh, in the Central Valley. When you get into kind of some of the farmland and some of the areas on the outskirts, you could definitely encounter a rattlesnake. Whenever we talk to patients that have snake bites, we ask, you know, where were you? What were you doing? And really the two or three most common scenarios are they were in the foothills um, because they live there. Yeah. Uh, they were out hiking. Um, or they were working outdoors and they might have reached under a bush or into a log or into an area where a snake was, you know, I think alarmed and alerted. Yeah. And, uh, and unfortunately the person got bitten on the hand. What should somebody do? You know, suppose this was a real snake and we yeah. just encountered it. What, what should human beings do in general whenever they encounter a snake of any kind, but especially a rattlesnake? For me, I, I love to go out and find snakes in nature and, and photograph them. So I just keep a good distance. I keep a safe distance from them. Um, and a snake like this size, this model is maybe about two feet long, something like that. Mm -hmm. The strike distance on that snake is going to be about a third of its body length. Mm. So um, they can um, they can strike pretty far, a lot further than it looks sometimes. Okay. Um, okay. And so you definitely, if you see a snake, the best thing to do is just observe it. Don't touch it. Don't get a stick. Don't move it around. Um, just just look at it and admire it from afar. If you're interested in snakes, mm -hmm. um, you know, get as close as as you're comfortable with. But at the same time, give that snake some room um, to to be a snake and to to just do its thing. So, 99% uh, of the time, they're just sitting at, at rest or they're moving across the trail. They'll move across the trail and they'll go away. If you startle them and they coil up back away from them and just leave them there for a minute and just wait. They'll calm down after a few minutes and then they'll move away from you. Um, they're definitely not there to try and attack you or hurt you in any way. Um, they're just trying to be a snake and trying to find food or find a mate. Um, and uh, you might have just interrupted that, that uh, behavior that they were doing. Will they always rattle um, whenever they encounter a human being or before they bite? Because that's another question that I get yeah. whenever we talk about snakes. Honestly, no. They, okay. uh, they sometimes will rely on what we call crypsis or their camouflage. So they'll try to be cryptic, which is what we kind of placed here is just some leaf litter. Um, they would be laying there just, they think maybe you can't see them. And so they're going to just rely on that over that rattle. Now, if you get close and you invade their space, most rattlesnakes will start to rattle. They'll do that. They'll let you know when you've gotten too close to them. Okay. Uh, here, what they've done is created models of what would happen to a human ankle if it got bitten by a rattlesnake. And so you see three different uh, models here. They represent three different time points. So this is an evolving injury that actually can get worse uh, over time. And that's one of the key lessons with snake bite management is you want to get it treated as early as possible. You want to call 911 or facilitate transport uh, which can be hard because sometimes people are out hiking, sometimes if they're in the foothills or in a remote area, it may take a while to organize that transport. But the sooner that person gets to treatment, the better, and the best treatment is, is really available only in an emergency room or a hospital. There's a couple of things that you can do to help that person, and then there's a couple of things that um, you should not do that unfortunately Hollywood gets wrong all the time. And we see this in the movies, on TV, and it's just not the right thing to do. It's not the scientific, medically correct thing to do. So the first thing that you do not want to do, do not give that person a tourniquet. A tourniquet is a very sharp wrapping that cuts off blood flow to the affected uh, extremity. So, you know, you see that on TV all the time. The person ties off a tourniquet with a belt or a rope, and that really cuts off blood flow to the arm. So what you're actually doing is creating a secondary injury. The venom is already damaging the tissue and now you've cut off blood flow and you're gonna damage that tissue even more. So the first thing that you wanna do is remove rings and jewelry and even remove the watch. And so that's because we're gonna anticipate swelling in that extremity. And what I'm going to show you is the splint wrap technique with a stick. Just keep in mind that this can also be done without a stick and it will be just fine as long as you don't make the wrap so tight that it creates a tourniquet. 
uh, you know, find a stick that's about as long as um, the person's forearm uh, from the fingertip to the elbow, and then just have them kind of hold it on one side, uh, typically away from the side of the bite. So if they got bitten on this side, you want to have the stick on this side. If they got bitten on the outside, you can have the stick on the inside. And, um, and you basically just do a wrap that's um, pretty easy to do. Anyone who's done, um, you know, any athletic training or physical therapy or sprained an ankle will know how to do this. You just want to slowly wrap the extremity um, as, as gently uh, as you can, but, but working quickly. Then immobilize the limb, keep it a little bit more comfortable. And then um, now what you'll be able to do is if you have another rope, you can now um, kind of use the other um, rope or, or um, you could use another ace wrap too if you want, but you could basically just create a sling to kind of keep this person comfortable until help arrives. And the less movement they make, the better, because that's going to keep them from going into pain. Because again, movement will cause pain until that person gets to a hospital where they can get pain medication. And it will keep the venom from spreading because that's another way that venom spreads is whenever we move our muscles, it kind of pumps the venom closer and closer to unaffected tissues. And so we want to keep that from happening too. Uh, and thirdly, it prevents the tourniquet from happening if you wrap it loose enough to where you can slip a finger easily between the skin and the bandage. And we've actually done research using ultrasound and the ultrasounds always show that this is a very superficial injury. They should be able to move all of their fingers pretty easily and otherwise they should be rather comfortable. Um, keep them hydrated, they can certainly eat and drink, um, uh, but just keep in mind that sometimes snake bites do cause vomiting. And that's really about it. That's what we recommend for field treatment of a snake bite. Otherwise, call 911 and get that person to a hospital where antivenom can be given to them as soon as possible.